So how did you get involved with Via Motors? Well, um, Alan Perriton, who is the president and chief operating officer, came to see me uh, about some advice on whom to contact at General Motors because he needed some help. And I, I was really genuinely intrigued with the concept. And then one day he brought a truck around and uh, I drove it in electric mode and waited for it to shift into um, a gasoline engine. It was a very early one, but you know, it drove just like a Volt. Right. And um, we started talking the business proposition, and, and I became I became absolutely convinced that here is a major solution. I mean, the, the Chevy Volt you may do it partly for image reasons, partly for societal reasons, uh, environmental reasons, etc. But these Via trucks, you do them for all those reasons plus commercial, mm -hmm. which you know in a fri in a free enterprise society that's that's what counts most of all right. um, and then Craig Higginson the founder and CEO um, asked me to be a board member and I was very enthusiastic about it because I I very much believe believe uh, in the technology and look as 2020 starts coming closer and we have these very onerous federal fuel economy mandates mm. or the price of gas reaches European levels, which is $9 a gallon. Um, what's going to happen to America's favorite Chevy Tahoes and Suburbans? Right. If you don't go this technology, they're doomed. Right. So I see a, an almost limitless future for uh, the Via type so it's truck. So it's good for fleets starting now. When do you think it'll be good for individual consumers? I don't know because the fleet demand is so overwhelmingly large uh, that now um, Craig Higginson almost has to tell uh, Dave West, you know, to stop marketing, stop the PR, because we're, we're looking at this avalanche of demand. Wow. And, um, and, and now all the focus has to be on finishing the vehicle, refining it, uh, getting it certified by CARB and uh, all of the other federal agencies, right. doing all the crash tests. In other words, get the vehicle finished and then ramp up production because the fleet demand is going to, um, I mean, will there be one or two retail units? Yeah, because I'm going to want one. You know, when I read your books, I realized it's almost amazing that anybody can make a car these days with, with everything that's required to make a production vehicle and get yeah. it on the road. Do you think it's important for the public to know? What it, it is, takes? but nobody listens. Uh, and and you know, right, we're right here on the West Coast near Silicon Valley, uh -huh. and the Silicon Valley guys all um, uh, treat Detroit with absolute contempt. You know, they say, "Oh, those guys are brain dead. They don't know how to do anything." Uh -huh. We we in Silicon Valley are the RSGs, which is short for really smart guys. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, why if we ran the automobile business? So you know, um, Elon Musk of Tesla. I uh, thought this would be easy, and once he got into it, he thought, holy smoke, this is a hugely complex business, and f finally he had to hire 500 Detroit engineers. By the way, at GM, when we decided to do the Volt, uh, all of the EV1 guys who had been sort of scattered to the winds or in various departments uh, all sort of coalesced around the Volt again, and were happy that they were back doing what they really yeah. liked. So it, it takes, I think, an, an EV, uh, EV enthusiasm as a necessary ingredient, but a lot of getting a truck like this ready for production or a vehicle like this re ready for production is just basic blocking and tackling, mm -hmm. and the Detroit guys are very good at that. To find out how you can benefit from plug-in electric cars and trucks, go to pluginamerica.org.